All right. So today I'm going to do something that I've been wanting to do for a very long time, and that's document a tube amp build. So I've sold my last tube amp. I need something a little bit smaller for home recording. So what I'm going to do here is uh, document the process of me building this thing and designing it. Uh, so I don't know how long it's going to take uh, or how many videos are going to come out, but I'll just post them periodically uh, throughout uh, me uh, building this thing. Uh, so right now, I'm at the very beginning, and uh, I'm going to start itemizing the things I want this thing to do. So all the features and parameters. So here we go. All right, so here we are to detail this amp. So here we just make a list of all the parameters and features that I want in this amp. So to start with, I want it to be about 10 to 15 watts. I want it to have maybe about a 10 inch speaker. Okay, I want it to have one tone control. So one tone control that'll control both uh, treble and bass. Uh, I want it to have one volume and maybe one gain. I'll put the gain in parentheses, but I'm thinking now probably likely I will have a gain. One gain knob. So number five, okay, what preamp tubes to use? Preamp tubes, I'm leaning towards 6SN7s. I've used them a lot in uh, hi-fi preamp settings, you know, for like audiophile equipment. They sound great, I love them, but they do have, uh, they have a little bit less gain than a 12AX7, but they also draw a little bit more current. Gain's not really particularly that important to us in this situation, but I do not want to have something that draws too much current from my power supply. So I'll put in parentheses if power trans allows. Okay. So if my power transformer can produce enough filament current for that kind of tube, then I'll use that tube. Uh, but if not, then we'll downscale to a uh, 12AX7. Uh, so number six would be output tubes. What output tubes do I want to use? Well, off the top of my head, I'm just thinking 6V6s. Uh, in a type of setting like this, it could easily get 20 watts out of them, but I only want a 10 to 15. Um, that's if I'm going to go push-pull, though, also. So if I'm going to go push-pull, then that's what I want the amp to be. Uh, but I'm also playing with the idea of going single-ended. And if I go single-ended, now I'm talking about some monsters here, like the 6C336 uh, KT88. KT-66. Uh, and maybe even a 6L6GC. Now, these are kind of going in the order of pretty much size and practicality. So the 6C336 is probably unfamiliar to most. But it's a, uh, it's a Russian tube that was used in avionics and radar. Um, it's this beauty right here. I mean, wouldn't you just love to see that thing glow? But it's very expensive, and it's kind of impractical. Uh, it would draw a lot of current. Uh, more than the cost, it would draw a lot of current, which would might uh, lead me to have to have a bigger power supply, or a bigger power transformer, and or use a separate filament uh, supply for it. Which I'm not okay with at this point. Uh, that's particularly why I haven't used a tube like that or a, uh, a transmission tube um, because they, they're typically going to require a separate transformer just to power the filament. Uh, but aside from that one then, you have a KT88 which is still kind of overload. Uh, maybe the question to ask is uh, 
uh, even if I had the filament uh, current, my B plus might be in jeopardy too. Even a B plus current to power the plate might be a little. I choke it out. It's a KT sixty six is pretty. It would be pretty sensible to do something in the ten to fifteen watt range, single ended. Use a KT sixty six. Using a six L six GC. I'd actually use probably the KT sixty six over the six L six GC. It would wouldn't stress it out as much. Um, but those are just single ended thoughts. Um, like I'm saying, we're still in the kind of imaginative phase so we can think about these things but most practically I would use the 6v6s or even EL84s likely um, for the uh, output section and go pull push because keep in mind that a single-ended, see, having a single-ended tube like a six, like a six C three three C is not only more expensive, but it's, but single-ended output transformers are also more expensive. So, so going single-ended just just uh, ramps up the cost. And now, if anybody doesn't know what I'm talking about when I'm saying single-ended, single-ended means that you're you're driving the output of the amplifier with only one tube instead of two which in a pull push figuration you'd have two, which is why, you know, if you're replacing, if you ever replaced uh, tubes on an, on an, in, an, in the output section of a tube amplifier, you notice that there's always, typically always two or more uh, output tubes. And if there's more than two, those are just running in parallel. Uh, but the idea with the pull push is that you have one, one, uh, one tube working on the positive cycle and one tube pulling on the on the negative cycle and that just basically shares they share the duty cycle so neither one of them is uh worked as hard so they're both working at 50 percent essentially so a uh in a single-ended scenario that one tube would be doing all the work um, so i think that's good for now i can't think of an eighth uh, parameter that i want just yet i think 10 watts having a 10 inch Speaker, one volume, one one tone control, one volume control. Again, uh, using it'll probably be at least two, at least two uh, six SN sevens. See, I, at, this, at this point, it's more it, it's more uh, important for me to try to fit in the six SN sevens uh, than it is to have these. Uh, have these single-ended tubes in there so so if it came down to it which it probably will because it's just the most practical thing to do here would be to use the six sn7s and just go with the six v6s uh though we can still play around with this but um that's most likely the configuration in which i can have the most um filament current available to me because you don't want to stress the filament current either right you don't want to have, you know, if I have two two amps of filament current, I don't want to just draw the, the actual, the whole two amps of the filament current, right? Especially if I'm going to uh, run a DC filament, you know, which would make the amp a lot cleaner. We would uh, get rid of a lot of hum. But anyway, uh, we'll go through some of that more later. So I think on the next video, what I'll focus on is picking out a power transformer and going through the numbers. So what I'll do from here is I'll list out all the tubes that I want to work with. First, I'll make up the most practical ones that are <coughs> that I should use, which would be a 12AX7 with 6V6s or the EL84s. And then I'll put kind of my, my ideal choices next to them and then uh, chart out all the uh, current that they, that they consume and see what uh, transformers are the most viable and the most affordable on the market to use in that kind of configuration. So uh, yeah, that's where I'm headed to next. So there we are, there's stage one of uh, constructing a uh, vacuum tube amplifier.